This episode is an Alive Now, where I talk about my first couple of days being in Ireland working on a horse farm. Tune in to hear all about the challenges and the growth that I'm experiencing, as well as themes that are coming up that you can explore yourself, including working with boundaries, loving yourself and being playful with yourself, releasing codependency, putting on your assertive hat, and clarity of intention. Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Embody Podcast, a show about remembering and embodying your true nature, inner wisdom, embodied healing, and self-love. My name is Candace Wu, and I'm a holistic healing facilitator, intuitive coach, and artist sharing my personal journey of vulnerability, offering meditations and guided healing support, and having co-creative conversations with healers and wellness practitioners from all over the world. Wow, it has been some time since I got to share with you what I've been doing, and I am absolutely in a whole other world. Hello, welcome back. It's good to have you here today, and I want to just share with you what's going on right now, which is why this episode is titled Alive Now. It's what I'm going through or experiencing, what my thoughts and feelings are about what's happening right here and now without planning and uh, more unfiltered than the other podcasts where I'm more organized and cohesive around a theme. So Alive Now, I love it because it's just touching into the vulnerability of the moment and what's truly alive now, which gives us life, which makes us feel that we're alive and here it is, it's live. So if you have been listening in, then you know that I'm in Ireland and it's cold here. It snowed yesterday, the day before that it poured rain It's extremely muddy everywhere. Thank goodness the person I'm staying with has let me borrow some rain boots because it is mucky. And uh, sometimes I step into mud and I'm practically knee deep. So you're probably wondering why it's so muddy and I'm talking about the weather so much because I am living on a farm with four horses. I'm staying with a woman who needs the help because she works Uh, sometimes nights and sometimes days, but works often. And her children have grown up and are doing their own thing. So I'm here to tend to the horses, which involves feeding them, cleaning out their stalls. Yes, cleaning poop and whatever else got in that stall. And bringing them in and out of their stable so that they can be in the field and the arena that they have here every day. I had no idea what this would be like. And as I got here the first night, I didn't get to meet the horses because it was dark and it was just pretty much time to go to sleep. Well, that night I was like, what have I gotten myself into? I, I want to go home. And I was pretty serious. But something inside me, a deeper voice said, no, Candace, you know why you're here. You're here for a reason. You want to learn and you want to learn how to be with horses in a very respectful and collaborative way. And this person, this host that you have here is going to teach you. And this is now a couple days in, about five days in, and that has been very true. My host is someone who has worked with horses for a long time and had her own horses and she learned natural horsemanship. And what she says now is that she responds to the horses and the horses teach her instead of learning from anyone else that's teaching horsemanship. She's learning from her horses. She's taking in the information about how her horse is responding, what they need to learn, how they're reacting and being responsive to them so that they can learn and grow alongside her. I am on the northwest part of Ireland, and burying this weather was one of the hardest things for me because the room I'm staying in is the coldest room of the whole house. 
And sleep is one of my biggest challenges anyway. And when I'm just way too cold, I pull the covers over my head and then I get too hot and it's just this kind of battle back and forth. But now that I'm in several days, I'm much more comfortable. I made the space so that it feels a little more like my own. I have rocks that I travel with, some crystals and some essential oils and some gifts from friends. So that all helps me feel a little more grounded and comforted. I'm used to traveling to different spaces. As you know, this year I've been traveling a lot, but I did travel with my partner and also I chose the spaces that I was going to stay in. We chose those spaces together and that brought a lot of comfort. I had a lot more control, even though there were so many things I couldn't control. But coming into this space, it was uh, kind of alarming. I am not used to being in a farmhouse and one where there's so much mud and poop, horse poop, just trekking in and out and using a coal fire to heat up the house, which I have some conflict with, but it's also keeping me warm. So uh, it's, it's an interesting experience. As you can hear, one of my challenges here is releasing my reliance on comforts. I think it's so normal as humans to have things that make you feel comfortable that you rely on and that you just you count on day to day to make you feel like you can get through life. Life is hard sometimes and we need those things. And as I got here, I felt very stripped of them, even the most basic things. I had to come to terms with. And as I do that, I remind myself why I came to begin with, which is to learn to work with horses and also to grow on the inside, to strengthen myself so that I feel actually a, a complete inner freedom. And I, it's, it's kind of a lot to ask for, but I want it. And this whole year has been layer after layer of gaining more inner freedom. And what I mean is releasing more attachments, releasing more belief sets that are outdated and don't make sense anymore. And now it's also to feel that I can love myself through the challenging moments. I can be with myself when I feel very alone. And if tough experiences happen, I can be that advocate and loving compassion for myself. I know that it's important to reach out for help and support when you need it. And to be able to do that is a skill in itself, something that I've learned and been able to do quite well in the last several years. So now my learning is different. It's to release any extra little um, tangled up dependencies on others where I actually can just pause and take care of myself. I can pause and see what on the inside is happening and what do I need and how can I stay with myself and provide myself what I need? How can I be a leader within myself so that I can actually lead in my life and here, in my experience, lead with the horses? It's especially challenging when I've experienced trauma as a child where I had disruptions with attachment, with attaching to my parents and feeling um, that love and security and safety. So as I travel and as I come here to this space, I feel yet again more layers of the need for safety, the need for comfort, and the experience of wanting it to come from the outside, but then pulling back and feeling the strength in me, that the parts of me that are my inner parent and inner lover that can give me that kind of safety and support that I need. And alongside it, I've been just reminding myself that I'm alive, I'm breathing, my body's here, I'm safe. And thinking back to some of the comforts that I had even a couple of weeks ago being in Germany, 
with my partner and his family and talking with friends and just drawing in experiences that remind me of safety and remind me of comfort. How simple it is to be able to just remind ourselves that we're safe right now. Physically, may or may not be emotionally, but physically we're safe and we can breathe. We're alive. Of course, not everyone is, but my guess is if you're listening to this podcast that you are. So I wanted to offer that and what I'm going through and talk a little bit about how it's been here. Otherwise, other than that initial reaction of wanting to go home and some of the learning that I've had. Well, the day after I arrived, I was able to witness my host be with all four horses and those horses were let into the arena and I watched them play out their their dominance game with each other of who was going to be the leader and what hierarchy was this herd going to be in and how are they going to um, interact with each other and watching the alpha horse maintain his space, keep his boundaries and tell the other horses to move out of his way and to back away when he wanted them to or to move when he wanted them to. So this is really interesting. I really need to work on my boundaries. I have worked on them with asserting my boundaries in terms of like what I need or want or what I, you know, where my limits are with people. That's something I've learned my entire life I feel like. And finally, I'm in a place where that feels manageable and there's still some stretching to do. But here I'm feeling really challenged because spatial boundaries are a part of that, spatial and energetic boundaries. And I've been asked by my host to start there at the very, very basic with the horses is to keep my boundaries, my um, physical boundary of having at least two horse spaces between me and the horses so that I can get accustomed to them. They can get accustomed to me uh, as a leader. And so the alpha horse doesn't let anyone in his space if he doesn't want them there. And that's something being a leader of horses is uh, necessary to do so that they respect your space and don't just plow over you. And so that you can establish a leadership role. So that's just what I've been learning. And if you are working with horses, you may have a different way. Um, I'm just a baby in this. I'm just getting to know this from scratch, really. Because what I have learned from other people really doesn't seem to fit into the scope of what I'm learning here, where We're going very slowly and foundationally so that we don't have to hit a horse or kick them or use um, harsh methods to ask them to respond because we only traumatize them and numb them. But we're asking them to respond with a sensitive cue and pressure and the release of pressure to show them that they found the right solution what we were asking of them. So that's kind of going down the rabbit hole of working with horses, at least from what I'm learning right now. But coming back to boundaries, it's not easy when a horse is walking right at you to assert that you don't want them to come closer. And you do certainly do not want them right up next to you and in your space. So that's a challenge for me. And As I've worked with it, it's already helped me feel stronger in myself. Along with that is not moving. If the horse gets you to move and gets you to move your feet or move around, then that horse is in a leadership position to you. And so they know they can move you and get you to move by just walking towards you or getting in your space. Well, that's 
not going to work in terms of being a leader with horses and wanting to collaborate with them. So standing my ground and being very conscious of where my body is, where their body is, and how to use my energy and the tools that I have. Uh, I can use like a carrot stick. It's like a stick with a string on it to extend my body kind of like a tail or a longer arm. Holding my ground, standing there and being solid. Of course, I've learned to do that in yoga, like Tadasana, standing there or being in a pose, but it's completely different for me when a large animal that's extremely powerful is coming at me. So with that, it's also helped me release a lot of self-consciousness and be even more present with myself and accepting of myself just being here. And that's something I'm taking into my life in a whole host of ways. Maybe you can even hear it in my voice right now. And I wanted to offer that to you today because it's such a, an interesting thing to play with. With humans walking down the street, it's not <laughs> maybe what we want to be doing is making everyone move out of our way. But are you someone that lets everyone move you and do you walk around everyone? Or do you bend to what they want and forget about your own intention or desire? Or do you not even know your own intention or desire? That's been a, a challenge for me when I meet up with a strong personality or perhaps an authority and I accommodate to them and shape shift and move around so that I can manage how I'm going to feel if they react, if I if I choose my own intentions, and if they're not favorable to this person, then um, there could be a reaction that I don't like, and then I could have a reaction to that. So it's really about managing other people's feelings to manage my own feelings. And that's something I've uh, worked with so that I can be, we can coexist, and I can have my intentions, and others can have theirs, and that is true harmony. Where are you with this? Is this interesting to you? And do you have the experience of wanting to either bend more and be more flexible and accommodating or to stand your ground more? And even imagine a horse coming at you and standing your ground and telling them, no, move, don't come close. There's no right or wrong and there's no best way. It's really about where you're at and what you want to learn next. And it's not just with boundaries that that applies to, it's everything. Every skill and tool that we have that people say, oh, you should be this way or you should learn that. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> it's only if you want to. It's only for your learning and your growth and you as an evolving human being, what you want to be doing here. And what tool you feel like you want to expand into or what way of being do you want to try so that you can expand? Or do you want to expand? It's completely your choice. So working with horses is, is bringing me to that choice as well. Being clear on what I desire, what I intend to do. And I, I mean that in a big way, like in life, but also in a moment where I'm coming out with a bucket of food. And I see a horse coming at me and I need to place this food in, in this stable and not have this horse come near me. What is my intention? And do I bend and get afraid and uh, take a different direction if I see this horse coming at me? Or do I say, no, let's stay over there and keep going. So I hope that's interesting for you. I also want to talk about how I've been treating myself with just a lot of acceptance and acknowledgement that I'm very new at this and letting myself go one step at a time, loving myself through the whole process and seeing what comes up. I can tend to put a lot of pressure on myself in situations where I really want to be good at something and I feel like I should already be good at it. And it's that passion mixed with some old perfectionism that 
makes me get hard on myself or feel ashamed if I did it quote unquote right or wrong. And I'm really learning that that's just not helpful and to shed and release those feelings because there's just so much that can happen with horses. And I just, I I don't want to go there anymore. I don't want to be mean to myself. There's no point. One of my healers was working with me on this and she was like, be crap at this. Just let yourself be crap at it. Which is funny because I, I'm shoveling poop every day. Is it mine? (laughs) Yes, there is some of mine that I'm clearing out and I'm aware of that too. Like, what am I releasing and getting rid of? What's the shit that's been in the corner? And a lot of that's clearing out here in this experience. Another aspect of myself that I have been working with while I've been here and while I've arrived is being assertive. I grew up in codependent relationships and therefore expect certain things of others and that can just come out here and there and luckily I can see it happening so when I arrived there were some basic things that weren't just like given to me and offered to me easily the way that I might welcome someone to my home and hope that they feel comfortable I had to ask for a towel and I had to ask for toilet paper and At first, I was like, oh, am I going to be too much? Or um, how is this going to be if I'm constantly asking for things? There are so many things I need. And these are just the basics. Uh, But I released that voice and said, no, this is quite reasonable to ask. And let go of some of the expectation that I had on my host to be that offering. She didn't need to be. And I'm very well capable of asking for things myself. And uh, was I expecting some mothering? And I absolutely was. I wanted to feel that comfort of someone taking care of me, especially since I'm living in their space. And this is a completely unfamiliar space and experience. And I'm going to be interacting with this person. I really wanted that mothering. But... I can do that for myself. I can mother myself and I can put my assertive hat on and ask for that toilet paper when it's not there. So it's really clear to me that when I'm frustrated or getting into a mode where I want to complain about someone or some situation, if I'm unhappy with a circumstance, that's an opportunity to go inside of myself and Notice my reaction, of course, and accept it, allow it. And that allowing gives way to see if there's a place inside myself to find a solution, to comfort myself or to uh, do something that can support me on the inside, or maybe it's doing something on the outside like asking or um, reaching out. So is this resonating for you? Do you have a place in your life where you want or need to put your assertive hat on and to take proactive steps around something where you might be waiting for someone else to do it or just, um, I don't know, dwelling or sitting in your circumstances without creating an active change, whether that's inside your heart or in your outer circumstances. Let yourself be curious with that and find some play, playfulness with it so that you can see yourself as this human who's learning and finding their way, exploring a different way to be in the world and to show up differently or to show up as more of yourself. It's all learning. So for me, this assertiveness shifts some of the old habits of codependency of relying on people to do things for me and me doing things for them but it gives a very clear boundary and autonomy 
that I can do for myself what I need and reach out for what I need. And I don't depend on other people to just know or to take care of my emotions. I can do that. Now, this is not to say that I do it all alone because I certainly have friends and family and healing coaches and healers that I work with that continue to give me support. And that's a planned time or that's when I need to reach out and I know to do that. But this is definitely a challenge I want to give myself is to see how I can find a different support within myself, a love within myself that's even stronger and more powerful so that I can move about the world in a way that feels even more like myself and even more full in myself. So with all that said, I continue on here. I've had moments of loneliness and recognize that that's part of my younger child perhaps or other parts of me that are having different feelings and um, work with those parts of me and I'm learning so much about being with horses and how to be responsive respectful and take responsibility for them and their safety so that they can be in a space that they can learn and that I can learn. So I'm still getting to know the space here, getting to know the horses, getting to know my host and her family. I'm getting to understand and work with my own schedule as far as when I'm seeing clients and when I'm podcasting and doing other things. The funniest thing is when a horse just clunks on by right past the window as I'm having a session. I haven't necessarily told my clients when that happens, but it's it's quite amusing to me to see that in the periphery. And I'm just adjusting here and it's all new. And if you are interested in hearing more, I hope to be sharing more of these Alive Now podcasts and We'll be sharing bits and pieces at the front end of each podcast uh, that's coming forward. And today I'll just leave you with a little story of a time where I had to be very kind to myself and just laugh at myself to um, take in the learning. It's pretty much horse horsemanship 101 or horses 101. Don't walk outside from the house with two buckets of food, no way to protect yourself, like no carrot stick, no anything, and not know where the horses are around you because they can walk right up to the house. They're free and at liberty. Yeah, don't do that. So I did that. And <laughs> um, yeah, one of the horses came right towards me and there wasn't any choice uh, safety always comes first and I um my host was shouting put one bucket down just one bucket <laughs> and I I couldn't take it all in I I got overwhelmed so my body kind of froze and I just stood there as this horse is coming at me I guess she wasn't coming at me like charging or anything but she was walking towards me and, and knew I had food so finally I put one down and of course she was eating it and I was meant to put the other one in one of the other horse's stalls and I hesitated because I was like I, I don't want to put this down she's going to eat it but uh finally I did because I heard my host saying it out loud over and over until I did it and managed to um, take care of the rest of the situation. But yeah, boy, did I learn my lesson to observe first and get a handle on what's going on outside, have some ability to, to um, expand my territory and my space so that the horses don't get near using the carrot stick and only come out with one bucket, just, just one. Don't, don't, 
don't bite off more than you can chew, Candace. And that does reflect my life. I tend to take on more than what might be comfortable. I can try to achieve a lot at once and I have a little bit of impatience with it. So I'm learning that patience and that one bite at a time experience. What a concept, right? It's something we hear all the time, but when it truly has consequences that are potentially dangerous, there's this other horse that would have plowed me right over, especially because I don't know her, um, just because she loves food and would have just like run right towards me. Luckily, she wasn't in that vicinity. But when things have real consequence and direct consequence like that, I, I learn very quickly, let's just say. So I'm, I'm really grateful for this experience and it's continuing to be challenging and very rewarding. And I think, I think I'll stick it out. So that's the end for today. Well, I hope that you got something out of this and I thank you for joining in and listening. And I hope you got a laugh out of it as well. I'm certainly laughing at myself and uh, trying to keep that amusement going. I'm always curious about hearing your thoughts and if you have questions, comments, feedback, or anything. So feel free to reach out to me. You can find me at CandiceWu.com. And tune in next week for even more of what's happening here. And... I'm sure I will have lots more to share about places I've messed up and what's happened or the learning I'm having and the challenges and the growth. So uh, take care and I appreciate that you tuned in and listened to this Alive Now moment. I hope you're feeling alive in yourself or moving towards what makes you feel alive. If you're interested in seeing some pictures or hearing even more personal bits of what's happening, I share those in my newsletter that go out every other week. So you can connect with my newsletter at CandiceWu.com slash embody and sign up there. And also check out the other podcasts at CandiceWu.com slash podcast. And I would love your support on Patreon if you like this podcast if you find it interesting or um, enjoy what i'm putting out there it would be such a great honor if you would like to contribute to patreon there are a couple of gifts there as well and exchanges that you can find there where you can receive meditations or be part of the embodied group call that happens every month all of the money on patreon goes straight to the production of this podcast as well as videos that i'm putting out all of the free content that goes out um, so i thank you very much for considering that and it goes a long way any little bit so let's end today with a quote that resonates very deeply with me about why I'm here working with horses. It's by Eckhart Tolle. And he says, We are here to find that dimension within ourselves that is deeper than thought. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next week on the Embody Podcast. Mm-hmm.